And so here's the completed sequenced light show, I suppose you could call it. Um, the Arduino is now driving pins 13, 12 and 11 into the three optos. Now you can see the inverted logic there. So only one of the LEDs is off at any one time. Um, I've color coded this yellow, orange and brown. And so you can see the yellow wire goes to enable on the SEPIC. Orange goes to enable on the MBI6651 driver and brown goes to enable on the PT4115 driver. But it's not entirely convincing at the moment. Um, you can see the movement. The best place you can see it actually is in my tin of Pepsi Max there. You can see the lights moving. But at the moment there's a problem and that is that the SEPIC converter uh, LEDs are bright. The LEDs on the other two aren't as bright and that's because I haven't pushed the voltage up to get the full one watt out of those LEDs because I'm pretty sure when I do that I'm going to blow one of these drivers. So I'm going to leave that right to the end. Now there's something else happening you may be able to see. There's this weird flicker and I think what's happening there is that the SEPIC driver is slow to start up. So you've got this period where all the LEDs are off and you can see it quite uh, easily. And actually, if you look at the data sheet for the uh, XL Semi XL6006, one of the features is, uh, where is it, built-in soft start function. And I have a funny feeling that, oh, I can see the LEDs there. Look in the bottom of my monitor. How nice. Anyway, I have a funny feeling that that's what's causing this ever so slight delay in the switching. So I'm beginning to think that maybe that driver... Uh, isn't so clever for um, doing a nice neat sequence. I'll take this off the bench in a moment and put it on the floor. But I think one thing I need to do now is um, speed this up. So perhaps the thing to do now is to look at the Arduino code. So this is the Arduino code. Now you can see from the top left that it's just based on the Blink program. All I've done is copy a few things, move a few things around. So, for example, in the setup function, um, I've duplicated the pin mode 13 stuff to 12 and 11, set them all low as an initial um, uh, setup, and then in the loop, I simply set 11 low, 13 high, 13 low, 12 high, 12 low, 11 high, with a delay of 500 between each of these uh, switchings, and then it goes around that loop over and over again. I'm not going to spend too long uh, poring over this code because it's not very interesting. And I will put this code in the comments on the video. Right, so I've just modified the Arduino sketch so that the three 500 millisecond delays are now three 100 millisecond delays. Um, where is it? There, delay 100, delay 100, delay 100. And it's all going a bit faster. Uh, in the Pepsi Max tin, you can see that there is the sort of um, movement effect that I was looking for. Bottom of my monitor, there it is, a line of lights. We've still got varying brightness between um, the two driver types. So now it's time to turn the voltage up to 35 volts. And this is the point at which I need to keep an eye on this first driver here because it doesn't have a good track record in being able to handle that sort of voltage. So here we go. Right, up we go. Let's keep an eye on both of those two things. Thirty five volts. Well, so far, so good. Now, has that leveled up the brightness a bit? Yeah, that looks a bit better, I think. We've still got this disturbing flash where it all goes off for a brief period, but I'm quite impressed that this driver's still alive. So the other one I blew up, maybe that was just a bad batch, as they say. So there's the finished project on the floor. And there is definitely... Um, that sort of 
movement of light that I was aiming for. But there is also that annoying flicker, and so the movement isn't entirely smooth. And as I say, I'm pretty certain that that flicker is due to um, the soft start of the Sepik driver, that it just has a little bit of delay in starting up. So if you wanted a beautifully smooth movement of light, I'd probably not use that driver. The PT4115 driver is still hanging on in there, but I'm 5 volts over spec, so I probably wouldn't use that driver, driver either. I think probably the way I would do this if I were to rebuild it, and I may rebuild it, would be to use three of the little MBI6651 drivers, that's the middle one of the three on my board, and also the boost converter to get the 35 volts high voltage. But that's it. That's the end of the project. Semi-successful. Quite happy, really.